you get some guys in terms of uh, special teams contributions? Yeah, I think we got several guys uh, you know, that can help us. There, there are several guys that had some experience doing it in college. Um, you know, Dax uh, had done some stuff in college and been a productive player early in his career. And I think that's kind of the story with a lot of these guys. A lot of these guys have played extensively earlier in their career. The same can be said with Cam, uh, Taylor Britt. I mean, it's virtually all these guys have done some form or fashion of it. The decision to re-sign Kevin, was that in the works all along? I mean, just kind of waiting to see how the draft fell out and then make that move? Yeah, I think the offer had been out there, the offer had been out there for some time. I, I think that uh, um, I, I think he'd have to speak to Kevin more about it, but I, I think that uh, he wanted to wait and see how the draft played out for us before he made a determination about what he wanted to do. And obviously we didn't do anything in the draft and didn't acquire anybody that way, so it makes an easier path to come back. What is a punting competition going to look like, Coach? You've never had um, well, we haven't had one in a long time, That's for sure. Kevin, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it, it, it's been a pretty good road for him that way. He hasn't, you know, had a ton of competition. I, I think it looked like it, uh, any of the kicking competitions we've had in the past. You know, I think you're going to uh, a punting competition with these guys got to split equal reps with, you know, different snappers. And, you know, I also think, too, that you know, the holding part is a, is a significant part of it, too. You know, I, I used to think that, um, you know, a punter's job, 60% probably of his job was punting and probably 40% was holding. You know, I think with the advent of uh, more of the analytic stuff that we rely on now, um, obviously, you know, having the personnel we have on offense, we go for them fourth down more than we have ever in my time here. So now I, I think some of that has shifted, for the, the punting and the holding part's probably shifted to the holding. You know, obviously having a weapon that we have in Evan, you know, um, in being able to back our field goal attempts up a little bit um, certainly opens the field up um, for those guys offensively too. And and so now, uh, you know, I, I think it's probably like more 55, 45, or it's probably damn close to 50, 50 um, punter job holding and, and punting. Could you see where there's a difference? Could you see a trend where the punter doesn't do it and maybe a receiver, maybe somebody with great hands like a receiver or something? No, never. I never see that happening because how do you, I don't know how you practice. I mean, how does the kicker ever practice? Um, so much of, of, of how a, the success, I think, of a kicker is the relationships and, and the timing that they develop between the snapper and the holder and the trust that they develop. And you never get to do that. That was old school stuff, um, you know, that they used to do way, way back. Um, get the guy with the best hands. Um, that would do it was a back. That's why he's, a lot of times you see a backup quarterback would often do it. Uh, but now I don't think that'll ever happen. It certainly wouldn't happen here, just because I don't know how you practice. You know, they need to develop the timing and the trust every day, um, or over in our side field, and people think we're doing we're doing nothing. You know, that they're they're developing trust between each other, and so uh, I certainly think that uh, that's a huge part of their job. Did you know, hold at Ohio State? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. You know, I, I think that, uh, um, you know, Kevin has a leg up, obviously, on that. He's done it for so much longer, um, you know, and he's been through it, 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 the trust, I think, that uh, Clark and Kevin have uh, gained over time certainly figures into that, too. Uh, but no, Drew's, a, it's something Drew's been working on hard, worked on it, and he knows that was a deficiency necessarily, or deficiency a little bit in his game. Um, and you know, for him to have to compete, or for him to put himself in a position to compete to be the starting punter, the kicker's got to have success when he's in there too. That's a big part of it. When evaluating a guy like Huber, who's been here now, going into his 14th year, versus mm -hmm. Drew, who's a younger guy, is the equity that Kevin's built up does that matter in a competition like this, or is it are they both on level playing field going into this competition? Well, I think there's certainly there's a, again it's a level of trust. I think I, I think it's probably what you're getting that when you refer to equity. I, I think there's a certain level of trust that I have in that that figures into it some. You know, I also know that we got to produce, you know, when in critical spots, we got to be able to punt the ball and we got to punt the ball in flip field position. And I don't think we did that as, as good as maybe what we've done in the past it, down the stretch of the season. And I think that's why we're even having this conversation right now. Um, but but it, yes, it certainly figures into it, you know, it, uh, um, there, there's not too many situations that, that Kevin and, and I have not been through, you know, in, in all the special teams play. You know, I have an, a great deal of trust in his ability to understand and know what to do. Now it's up to him to physically go, be able to go out there and prove that he can still do that. Darren, a lot of years, I mean, you would scale Kevin back in K 
can't save his leg. Mm -hmm. I mean, how much is there a balance in that for you? How much do you really need to see from him in a competition when, you, when you've seen it all kind of from him? Yeah, I, 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 I think that's a very, very valid point. You know, I, I think one of Kevin's most productive years was, was uh, 2020, and it was COVID, you know, and we, we had no offseason. We had no OTAs. So really, he's out there doing it on his own. And, I, you know, I, a big part of what I tried to do a year ago was scale him back. Uh, you know, it was really tried to scale him back. You know, I, I think it was unfortunate. If you remember, Drew got hurt um, at the beginning of training camp or coming into training camp, he was hurt. So I really had no choice. But, uh, you know, Kevin had to punt more than what I would like for him to punt. And Drew really didn't have a chance to compete, you know, really all through training camp to, to win the job a year ago. Um, but it, it is certainly, do I need to see uh, what Kevin can do? Yeah, I need to see what he can do. I need to see um, to a degree, you know, that he still has it, that he can still physically go out and do the things that he needs to do to be a competent punter in this league. Um, is uh, June, is May and June the time for that to happen? Not necessarily. I think that's going to be more August and in July or August and September. But it is, it is a valid point. Is, the, is that the same case for Clark as well with Cal on the roster? Yeah, I, I think it's probably real close to the same thing. Again, both of those guys are guys that I certainly have a, a, a great amount of respect for. Um, but with, with, with everything, you know, you're, you're trying to put the best 53 guys or the best 46 guys or 47 guys, whatever the hell it is now, out there on the field. And uh, do I, you know, again, Clark has seen every rush known to man in, in you know, over his career here, even in the league, and, and you know through video and through tape study, do I need to see a ton for him about what he can do? Yeah, I, I need to see it more later on, you know, uh, to see that, again for the same reasons does he still have it, and, and how does that compare to what you know maybe this other guy can bring, Cal can bring. The fact that you hunted four, you know, in your in your career, not only the the distance, you know, this leg strength, how as you you know advance in terms of experience, um, how does that start to affect other things that you need to do as a punter in terms of, you know, um, short field, keeping it inside the 20-yard line, all the different techniques, everything that you have to do as a punter, how do those get affected? Well, I really think that, quite honestly, punting now is not just really, it's not very often you're just lining up and wailing away and seeing how high and seeing how far you can hit it, how high and how far you can hit it. I, I think it's so much more situationally involved now, you know, based on um, A, field position, B, who you're up against, who's back there returning punts. I mean, you know, our, our division has certainly upgraded um, the return games, you know, with Jakeem Grant in Cleveland. Um, you know, Pittsburgh still has uh, Deontay Johnson. You know, he hasn't done it a whole lot. He's still very effective. I know that Ray Ray McLeod's not there, but they just drafted a good one in Calvin Austin. Um, you know, and then Baltimore has the AFC Pro Bowler in Duvernay. So, I mean, so much of it now is situationally based, Lap, that uh, um, being able to know exactly what punt you need to dial up in every single play is more important than, you know, just overall leg strength. Um, there are times, though, that, that when you need to have true leg strength, if we're punting off our own 10-yard line, you know, we got to flip the field. we got to make sure they're starting off on the other side of the 50 where, yeah, you've got to find that. And, and he's still got to be able to do that when we need it. And uh, but, I, but I think situational punting has become um, a much, much, much bigger emphasis than, you know, for me, I know, than what it used to be. How is true in that regard? Is Drew got everything, all the tools you need to feel comfortable with the situational aspect? Well, I wish I would have been able to see that a year ago in the preseason games. He didn't get to play any preseason games, you know. So you never know how guys are going to react until you know they're really out there in in critical spots. It's a hell of a lot different doing that, you know, on Friday afternoon at at two thirty at practice as it is to, you know, in a, even a preseason game or even, a, God forbid, a regular season game. So I need to see him be able to do that to have my uh, confidence that he can do it in critical spots. I need to see him do it in games. It seems like you do have some confidence in him, though. You guys have brought him back and yeah. tried to keep him around as much as Well, I think he's a guy that has some ability. You know, he, he proved that uh, um, when, when I did see him a year ago, he proved that. He, he had, a, he had a, a nice career at Ohio State. There's obviously things that, uh, um, that he's working hard that we've really uh, tried, I've tried to make a big emphasis to him. These are the things that you need to do to put yourself in a position to compete for this spot. And uh, he's a smart guy, and I think he's working hard to try to do those things. Um, so, yeah, I, I think he has ability, and now it's up to him to 
put it out there and show it. There's so much talk, Darren, about speed on defense and being able to cover wide receivers. Yeah. What about speed on special teams? Oh, it's what it's, what it's all about for me. It's, it's speed and, and the will to want to make a play. Um, and, and I think we've certainly upgraded our level in those spots. or we, We've upgraded the, the speed for sure with the addition of some of those DBs um, that we've added through the draft. And, uh, uh, you know, experience, I think, is something that uh, – <laughs> It's not overrated, but it uh, it's something I think is, is a general rule. You see less and less of guys that come into to uh, pro football now have in, in college football. I Meaning, there's some guys don't play much at all. You know, special teams in college because they're the front line players offensively and defensively. I mean, Chris Evans had done a little bit of it at Michigan. He hadn't done a ton of it, but you know, he, he's going to become if he wants to get a jersey on Sundays. He's got to become and did become a good player for us on special teams, and, and certainly know that they can impact the game, you know, in what they do there. Again, I think you saw at the end of the year when he became the kickoff returner, you know, after we uh, moved on from – or Darius got injured and we kind of moved on from him and Chris became our kickoff returner and did a fine job of it, you know, down the stretch. And, you know, he didn't get an opportunity to return him on the Super Bowl. Like they chose to take all touchbacks. So, again, I think it's a good example. Um, s speed is certainly huge. You, you, you can't be fast enough in my area, I think. Um, because it puts so much pressure on coverage or puts so much pressure on return teams. The faster you're able to run, the more pressure you can put on them. A, if they're going to make a play or make a tackle, or B, to even force penalties. Um, so yeah, speed is a huge, huge, huge factor. I think we've really done a good job of identifying guys that, that uh, you know fit the bill there. I think the guy from uh, Toledo has like 17 career special teams tackles. Mm -hmm. He played a lot early, not as much now. Correct. But where does he compare the guys that have come in? Because we know this guy is going to probably he's going to make the club. He's going to play for you. How 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 comparatively how far is he maybe ahead from some of these other guys that have come in in the past? Well, I, I think we'll find that out shortly. But I think in terms of experience, you know, he he's had some production, as you said. I think he had 17 tackles in his career. You know, again, he's a size speed athlete. I mean, he's six one. He's 210 pounds. He runs under four four. I mean, those are those are great things for me. Um, now I just got to get him up to speed on you know the mental part of it and the way we do things here. Um, is there? A, a, I don't know that there's a great comparison. You know, somebody like Clayton Fedgel. I mean, he he, he wasn't uh, for all the good things that he did. He didn't run sub four four, um, uh, and he wasn't 210 pounds. He was 200 pounds. Um, but you know, the one thing that Clayton had was desire. He had the will to want to make a play too, and and that's what I, I think will show up too as we get more into this and into preseason games. Even is is you know all those guys the will to want to make a play and the will to do things the way that we want them done will really show up. Is that why, I mean, over the years you think, all right, boy, defensive back, they have a great shot because they've tackled, they've tackled before. Mm -hmm. You've had your share of wide receivers and running yeah. backs, though, that have turned into great special teams, kind of get people on the ground. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you determine that the guy has the ability to do that? What do you see in guys? Well, I, I think the positions that they put themselves in in practice lap are the biggest things in the way that we practice. Um, you know, helps develop those techniques. Cause that's not something they do every day. You know, we've we've had plenty of hell. I mean, we've had tight ends that that uh, you know become very effective guys that are good tacklers. I mean, it dates all the way back to Tony Stewart. You know, um, way way back to guys like him. We we've had some some really really good tight ends that can can play and cover and, and receivers. Kevin Walter. You know, that's how he cut his teeth in this league was. You know, being a productive special teams player, Tab Perry, um, those are just guys dating way back. I, I, I think, uh, you know, the drills and stuff that we do to teach them how to put themselves in good position to tackle in practice, I think, helps that. Uh, you know, and then obviously them just being able to go out and do it in the games, you know, is 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 a big thing too. But yeah, you, you, regardless of where the the pool of those players come from, whether they come from defensive, you know, defensive backgrounds or offensive backgrounds, you know, they all got to play the same way on Sunday. What did you think of the punt returner class? Were there guys that you liked and were really excited about that just didn't fall to you? Or did you feel like it was a little disappointing there weren't more about more that you were kind of hurt interested in? Well, I, I think for whatever reason, um, the last couple of years, it's, it's been leaner to me, I think, than, than what it's been in some years. You know, um, you know, there were some good ones. I mean, um, 
uh, that, that came out this year. I just don't think there was many good ones, many that I viewed as being these are going to be top flight NFL starters. And quite frankly, all, of all the top guys that, I, that we've had rated over the last five draft classes, Colt and I went, went back and looked and see how they did in the rookie season. And really none of them have, have blown it out of the water. Um, you know, that are 10 or 12 or whatever yard punt return average guys. Um, really, there's not been any of them that have done that. And so I don't know if it's a matter of transitioning from the rule, how the rules are different in college football. You know, in, in college football, the biggest difference in the rules is everybody can release on the snap. You know, and that's where there's, you see so much of the scramble, rollout, rugby punts uh, in college football. And that those, those things aren't allowed in the NFL because only the gunners, the end man, can release. So it becomes it's a bit of a different game, I think, in college football. Um, you know, they're more when you – and, again, I think it deals with personnel. Um, on, on, in college football, some of these punt team players are linemen. They have, the, they have the, you know, the front wall of people to block, and they have what they call the shield. And a lot of times these shield players in college football are big guys, they're linemen. I mean, it's legitimate. These punt rushers rush on this punt team, and you know, they rush for 10 yards, and these, this, this is like a battering ram. And they got to put these big guys out there. But they do that so the snapper never has to protect. Uh, you know, they try to make it as easy as they can for the long snapper in college football. Um, so, again, you, you get a variety of – I'm making a long-winded answer here, but you get a variety of different reasons why I don't think that, that it hasn't equated quite as good. I, I think you're not, you're not playing with the skill of players in college football and coverage, so I think college returners are more productive than they are when they get to the NFL. Um, but the pool of, of guys, it just hasn't been as deep as it has been in the past, it, it seems to me. Yeah. Safe to say Trent is probably kind of fairly solid as – you now still with the returner? Are there other guys you have your mind on that could be in a competition there? Or maybe you're curious, some of your draft picks, how they would yeah. maybe look as returners? Well, I don't know if we have any draft picks necessarily fit that bill, but I mean, we, we, we uh, you know, Trent is certainly, uh, as you know, I don't want to lose games by not being able to handle the ball, you know, uh, on, as a punt returner. And, uh, you know, we, that certainly happened last year for us. The San Francisco game just killed us. Um, you, you, you aren't going to find many games that you win and turn the ball over, you know, on special teams. Not once, but twice. And so you don't want to lose games by doing that. And he's certainly somebody I have a great deal of trust in. Um, I, I had a great deal of trust in him coming out of training camp a year ago, too. And because uh, he's done it, he's got skins on the wall in, in this league of doing it. Um, you know, there are other guys, too, that have worked their tail off, you know, the whole season. Pukas is somebody, obviously, that uh, is going to be an intriguing guy to see how his development has gone from year one to year two. Um, we have another Jay Hawk that we, we signed as a free agent in Kwame Laster, too, who's done it. And uh, the more of those Kansas guys we can get, the better. <laughs> Coach, you'll win a game. Um, <laughs> I don't want to be the last guy. Yeah, we got one more time for one more question. Yeah, so real quick, I don't know if this was asked earlier. You know, uh, Mike said that the, the team meeting that Zach had with the players, talking about everyone was out in front of us. What was the reception like? You know, what was the feeling like when, when Zach said that? And what's that kind of? Say that one more time. I, I couldn't skip it. Yeah, so Mike said, you know, in the team meeting that, Zach told the team that everything that y'all want to attain is out in front of y'all. Yeah. How do you feel like that perception was taken amongst the players? Well, I think everybody understands. The unique part about this business and, and what we do is, you know, we don't get to pick up where we left off. I mean, that, 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 we, we, everything hit, we get to hit reset. And we're all at zero, zero. I mean, in, uh, we don't get a pick up where we left off. So we're, we're not a Super Bowl team. We played in the Super Bowl last year, but, but we have, it, it, the, the roster is completely different. Um, but he is right. Everything is still right out in front of us, the same way it was a year ago. It's just a matter of us executing it and doing it and being, you know, having the right opportunities. But I, I think it's re received exactly the way it should have been. I, I think our guys know and understand that. It'll be, it'll be something certainly that we hit on you know, throughout the rest of the offseason and through training camp is, hey, we're, we're starting over. We're, we're at ground zero again, same place that all 31 other teams are too and because and, they're battling for the same thing, just like we were a year ago. You know, we're sitting in the same spot. And I think it's proof that, uh, uh, you know, if you put a good product together, you put uh, a group, you get a group of guys that believe in what you're doing and believe in one another, that, you know, everything's out in front of you.